Hey everybody, welcome to Cut Transform Glow. It's funny how we sometimes repeat some past mistakes. This was definitely the case with the Flamingo Combat Robot. With my choice for the leg design, let's just say it wasn't the best I could have made. If you look closely, it was the very same poor design choice I made for the first Combat Robot I built in this channel, where I used a ball joint for the ankles. In the Flamingo Robot, I went with a 3D printed ankle, thinking it would be enough to hold the robot's weight, and it definitely wasn't. The PLA pieces deformed over time. What a dumb choice. Now, remaking the whole ankle piece isn't an option, but I think there's enough space under the waist for an extra piece. So let's go with that solution, shall we? And of course, let's begin by selecting some cool looking ribbies from my collection. So as always, I went looking for some shapes to create this new structure. Right here I'm not only looking for something cool but also strong enough to provide some support and help the poor little ankles that were giving up. Now for this savage mission I'll use everything I have access to. I'll go for the good old gribblies, laser cut acrylic shapes and of course some precisely made 3D printed pieces designed to reinforce and match the shapes I just chose. And then it was just a matter of attaching everything together, keeping in mind that the most important thing was ending up with a robust structure. So I'm using pieces that fit well together and reinforcing the sea angle with some baking soda. Also, as you can see, I'm not leaving any gaps in between the pieces. Right here, for instance, I'm adding a tiny acrylic disc to fill that notch and provide more surface to the next gribbly. Pieces of course needed some retouching, so I used my mini disc center for that. Now I know you're probably wondering, what the heck is this guy building? The answer is pretty simple. Do you guys remember my repair unit? To make sure that big guy didn't fall over, I've added a recharging cable to its diorama and I'll try to do the same thing right here. Of course, that cable needs to be reinforced with steel wire on the inside, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Right now, my main concern is to be able to attach this thing to the base, to the diorama, so I'll use a family mirror drill bit to put a hole through it. And I've also added a thin disc of acrylic on the bottom of the structure to create a distance from the base. Through this 4mm hole I'll of course put an M for a bolt and catch that from the bottom of the base with a nut. But in order to disguise the bolt look I'm going to use some 3D printed resin gribblies which I print in bulk for situations like this one. These pieces are super useful, I'm kinda building my own library of gribblies with my resin printer. And then I've added a few extra details on the surface of that structure, making it ready for the first coat of primer. Now, you guys know me, I'm a bit of a hoarder, so I have this big collection of wires and tubes. In it, I found this shiny hollow rubber tube and wanted to use it, but I needed to make it stiff first. So I grabbed some steel wire and braided it using my power drill. To be honest, I didn't get it right on the first try, but eventually I got a straight enough braided cable that perfectly fitted the rubber tube. And now I need to make the piece that will connect that cable to the robot. And for that, I have the perfect Gribbly. Do you remember this one? This is a resin piece that I made for the Gribbly Hunter project. Let me know in the comments if you remember this little guy. In my collection of small shapes, I got a couple of extra pieces and then I just combined everything with some CA glue. Now, as I said in the beginning, I need the attachment points to be solid. So I'm making some extra effort to, to make sure that everything fits perfectly. This is of course why I'm also adding this thick steel rod in there, to make sure I have a nice attachment point under the robot. 
Now that I have all of these structures ready, I need to figure out where exactly to put them. So I begin by grabbing the rubber tube with the seal wire and trying to pose it to find the perfect spot. Now finding that spot on the base was an easy task and not that nerve wracking, but the real trouble began when I tried to find the spot under the robot. I was super worried about messing up the whole thing. I went extra careful as you just saw, slowly upping the drill bit sizes and everything went well. The only thing left to do before the painting process was to remove the shininess from the rubber tube, which I did using an abrasive sponge. Everything seems to be working properly, so let's go for the painting process. Now, even though these are just a couple of tiny pieces, nothing too crazy, I want to go for that extra level of detail, so for this one I'll break out the airbrush. But the first decision I gotta make right here is what color to paint it. Do I want it to kinda stand out from the base and from the model, or should I go for something like more subtle? In the end, I decided to go with something subtle, uh, closer to the color I already have on the base, so it doesn't like compete for attention with the robot. And to paint everything, I'll use my good old Pash airbrush. Nothing too crazy right here, just the same base color carefully applied to every piece. And always remember, a hair dryer is the model maker's best friend. I decided to add an extra color on the bottom piece, so some masking was necessary. And here's some unintentional ASMR carefully selects it for you. God, I hate ASMR, but anyways, then I made some retouching on these spots where the masking kind of failed. And then I went straight for the chipping, chose a couple of sharp tools in my collection, and then I carefully made some wear and tear on the paint job. And from that I went through the wash process, which is essentially using a super thin down acrylic paint to make the model kinda dirt. To be honest, this is the only fun portion of any painting process, so yeah, I love doing the, the wash on my models. Now I of course still needed to also add some weathering to the base where the new structure would be, and I did that using some soft pastels. Then everything received a final coat of matte varnish, and then it was just a matter of putting everything together and testing this new structure. Will this save my flamingo combat robot? Let's see. As you can see, it is still kinda wobbly, but I'm sure this will never fall over. Now the flamingo robot can go back into its shelf and oversee everything that goes in this shop. As always, thanks for watching. Thank you.